Interest rates are significantly higher today than where they were 12 months ago. And while we can't perfectly predict where interest rates are going, we just saw the Federal Reserve Bank raise interest rates again. And there's no real indication that the Federal Reserve Bank is going to start cutting interest rates anytime soon. So at the very least, we can expect interest rates to stay high for some time now. Now, of course, we keep you up to date on what's happening here. But if you want to stay up to date with what's going on with interest rates and our economy when it's happening, the easiest and simplest way for you to do that is to join something like Market Briefs, which is my free financial newsletter. If you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, it's a super simple to read newsletter. You can read in less than five minutes every morning, and my team is breaking down what's happening in the economy, the stock market, the housing market, crypto, and the global economy. It's fun and witty to read, and you can read it in less than five minutes every morning. If you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I'll put the link to how you can join down in the description below. Second, we have the inflationary pressures. The issue with this is essentially now the prices of everything has gone up. That means your rent and housing costs are more expensive. Your groceries are more expensive. Everything is more expensive, which means people have less cash in their bank accounts, which means people don't have the same ability to go out and go buy a car the way that they did a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, people had big bank accounts. People saw their credit card debt dwindling. Now we're seeing credit card debt rising and we're seeing savings accounts falling. So people have less ability to go out and buy cars just because, well, they don't have the same wealth that they did before because inflation is eating away at people's wealth. Third, we're seeing the economy slowing. During 2020 and 2021, people's incomes actually rose because they got so much free money from the government. Today, incomes are falling, especially when you compare it to inflation, because for one, we're seeing layoffs happen across the board in so many different industries and companies are having to pull back. Some companies can't give the same bonuses and raises that they could before because the economy is slowing. And number four, we're seeing the supply of cars start to rise. They're starting to rise because people aren't buying the cars. And second, we finally have the ability to start producing more cars. We're still not up to full production, but car production has significantly increased from where we were during the pandemic, which means now we can finally start to see the supply of cars start to rise. Each of these factors are putting downward pressure on car prices because car prices are ultimately determined by supply and demand. When you have more buyers than sellers, the price of this thing goes up. When you have more sellers than buyers, the price of this thing tends to go down. What we're seeing happen right now is we're finally starting to see more supply. We're finally starting to see some more cars. Now sure, the supply isn't a ton, but it's starting to go up. Not to mention the fact that we're also starting to see more car repossessions because of the economy slowing, which is also starting to increase the supply. But we're starting to see supply start to trickle upwards while the demand to buy a car is going down. The demand to buy a car is going down because, well, people are losing their jobs, because people can't afford their rent, so they don't want to go out and buy a car, and because it's much more expensive to buy a car because interest rates are higher. So the demand is falling while the number of cars for sale is starting to rise, which is putting downward pressure on car prices, which makes it seem that in the coming months, you as a buyer will have way more negotiating room and leverage when it comes to buying a car because, well, you'll have the upper hand. And another reason for that is because of what I've kind of been hinting at this whole video, dealers being underwater. What we've been seeing happen over the last year, year and a half, two years, is that many dealers were paying top dollar to buy their inventory of cars to keep up with all this crazy demand. And that meant that some dealers, the most popular example of this is Carvana, was paying top dollar for these cars sometimes paying top dollar without even seeing the car, which turned cars into an asset for a little period of time because people were selling their cars for a profit to companies like Carvana that wasn't even looking at the cars. They were just coming and giving you top dollar for your car, thinking that they'd be able to turn around and sell a car for an even bigger profit. But now what's happening is dealers who had bought up this huge inventory of cars using debt are now sometimes underwater on their cars or starting to become underwater on their cars. This is putting a lot of pressure on dealers to either A, sell the car quickly before it goes underwater, or B, if you're underwater, well now you can't do much because you're stuck. We haven't seen the full impact of this on dealers yet. Obviously the Carvana company has seen the biggest hit because it's a public company and because of how much publicity it got during the pandemic, the Carvana stock has fallen almost all 100% over the last couple of years. But for the smaller dealers and for the more regional dealers, we haven't seen the real impact of this yet. Because if now they're sitting on a lot of cars where car prices or car values are dropping and they become underwater, 
and people aren't buying them, that's going to put a lot of pressure on dealers, either to discount cars or if they start seeing liquidations on cars because now the banks are saying we need our money, well then this could completely change the game for the used car market. Now this is going to be really leveraged on where interest rates go and where demand goes for cars, but over the coming year, we're going to see a lot of changes in the car market and right now, if these factors don't change drastically, we have a lot of downward pressure when it comes to car prices. So if you've been thinking about buying a car, well, you have the leverage on your side, it seems, in 2023. Now, of course, we keep you updated on what's happening, when it's happening, with market briefs. If you haven't joined yet, make sure you do that. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep hustling. <laughs>